I would like to tell people how it was when we were liberated. One of the SS men came and said, you are free. So here we were, first we started to cry a little bit, and then we, did, we, 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 had, we were hungry, we, were, we wanted to eat because we just came out of concentration camp. Very few people survived the largest Nazi death camp, Auschwitz. Fewer still survived the monstrous medical experiments of Dr. Joseph Mengele. Esther Haas of Squirrel Hill survived them both. I was born in Holland, in The Hague, a beautiful city. Ricky, Rocky, Cla Claire, and Est Etty, they call me, no, not Esther. Esther was one of four daughters born to a well-to-do Dutch-Jewish family. Two years after the German occupation of Holland, the Nazis started rounding up Jews to send them to concentration camps. When they came to get us, it was Thursday evening. I never forget that. And my mother says, go in the kitchen and make some cookies. So I did. And then they came in and they started to eat those cookies. I says, wait a minute. This we take with us. And they, they didn't touch it anymore. I was so mad at them. We knew we were going to go in a train. And from there, they brought us to Westerbork. That was a camp in Holland. Westerbork was a Nazi transit camp, a temporary holding area for people on their way to concentration camps in Germany and Poland. One of Westerbork's most famous prisoners was Anne Frank. They didn't have so many trains to, to bring the people to Auschwitz and, and, and other, other camps. So once a week, on Tuesday, they, they picked out old people and the people that could not walk too much, and they put them in the trains. Most of those people were gassed right away. Esther was kept at Westerbork for nine months, and during that time, her sister Ricky and Ricky's husband arrived. Esther remembers bargaining with a prison official in hopes of keeping them from being sent on to Auschwitz. I talked to the man who was in charge, a Jewish man. And about a month, he says, okay, I'm not going to send them, Ricky and her husband. Uh, she, she can stay here. And about four, we four weeks later, he says, um, she, she was very pretty. Uh, he said to me, I let her go, but only when she goes to bed with me. So I never told it to her. I never saw them again. Auschwitz. Right away when she came, they put her in the gas. Esther's turn came too. She was herded into a cattle car for Auschwitz. I'm sure we were scared. We were about three and a half days in the thing, there were no toilets, nothing. It was so terrible. Once at Auschwitz, there was the selection. Healthy men and women were separated from the elderly, sick and young. Overseeing many selections was the camp doctor, Joseph Mengele, who became known as the angel of death. He would point to the left meant forced labor, to the right, the gas chambers. And you know what this is? Because we were Jewish, we got that. Mengele was also looking for something else during the selection. Twins, young women, human specimens for bizarre medical experiments, like changing eye color by injecting dyes, attempts to alter the sex of children, sterilization of young women, all done without anesthesia. Some people got operations, some people got uh, just a, a shot, but we never knew why. Some people could not have children, and some people uh, could have children. We, we, we found out after the war. Mengele chose Esther as one of several hundred guinea pigs used for gynecological experiments. One time I went in, and that 
probably did a, a lot of not good things in my, in my, in, I don't know. They never told us what it was. Esther was held in Block 10, where she found a group of friends. We had 10 girls. We stayed together wherever we went. I stayed mostly in the barrack because I, they needed me there for the sick people. And uh, sometimes I got so tired of it that one of the girls stayed and I could go in the fresh air. Esther and the other women were considered Mengele's property. From the Germans, he bought this. They needed money too. And that was maybe our help. Those girls also got a little bit more eating and also they slept in a bed. Uh, really warm in a bed and stuff like that. And he came once in a while and he looked at everything and he said, he said they have it too good here. I remember he was very handsome. I didn't talk to him. He didn't talk to me. I was, I was a Jew. Being Mengele's property saved the girls from death more than once. They took us to the gas and um, and we knew what we, where we going to go. They were going to go die. But there were always uh, people in our barracks. They said, no, no, they are the girls from Dr. Mengele. Twice they did it. The girls in Block 10 often lost hope. But Esther kept their spirits up, especially when they returned from Mengele's operating table. When somebody was bleeding, you couldn't do nothing. The only thing what you can do, give them fresh water a little bit, and, uh, and, and staying a little bit, and talk to them a little bit. There was nothing. Nothing but cold, hunger, and fear for the next two and a half years. But Esther remembers a strong will to hold on. Everybody wants to live and not to die. As the Allies closed in, Esther was again shipped out to another camp in Germany. Finally, the Americans arrived. You know, when, when we got free on my birthday, and the, the girls, the other night, they went to a restaurant, and they asked for cookies and lemonade, and they got it, May 8th. 1945. Freedom, we had to get used to it. We cried a lot. We couldn't believe it that we were going to go home. Esther returned to Holland, where she found a sister, Clara, who had survived the war, posing as a Christian. My father was 50 years old, 5 -0. They killed him right away. My grandparents also, my uncles and my aunts, Everybody was gone. After the war, Esther went to Israel. While there, Esther married and had a baby girl. The child had birth defects and died at eight months old. Esther could have no more children. She blamed it on Mengele's experiments. Esther finally settled in Pittsburgh to be near Clara, her only living relative. I thought that I, I should be together with her. For many years, Esther would speak publicly about her Holocaust experiences, though it was very, very difficult to relive the past. I can't do it no more. I get, I, now I'm, it is going to take a long time that I can sleep. And what happened to the evil Dr. Mengele? At the end of the war, he went into hiding. He fled to South America, where he was aided by Nazi sympathizers. But he was always on the run, he finally drowned in 1979 after he had a stroke while swimming. It was an easier death than that suffered by his victims. He was a mamza. You know what the mamza is. He was a bad man. 